Hi, it's Dan Weston here. Welcome to the TennisRacings.co.uk tournament preview videos for the 27th of February 2017, which is the week eight, oh, sorry, week nine of the ATP Tour. Um, I'm going to keep this pretty short and sweet. Uh, matches are all over the place right now. It's one of those like, hellish weeks where there's matches pretty much 24 hours around the clock, which is good for for people who, you know, part-time traders or betters who who have jobs, but not so good for, for me who has to prepare lots of um, spreadsheets at different time zones and uh, trading and gambling and whatever at different time zones as well. So, yeah. Bit of a tough week, but we have two 500 tournaments um, coming up this week. Uh, one in ATP Dubai, the other one in Acapulco, Mexico, both on hard court, and we have a 250 on clay in Sao Paulo. We can see here, looking at the data for Dubai, first of all, 2.2% below ATP mean for service holds, and with 0 0.08 difference between the, the tournament mean for aces per game and the ATP mean as well. We can see that conditions in Dubai are expected to be on the slow side of medium. Um, definitely won't help the servers this week, and I'd expect quite a few breaks in the inset swings generally. And we can also see here that the, the front runners in the market, particularly the top sort of six, are very return orientated on the whole. Well, so return orientated, not necessarily return orientated. Federer is certainly not return orientated. Varenka is certainly not return orientated. But they have decent return numbers. Is what the point I'm trying to make. Um, and and on the whole, these these players also have uh, good deficit recovery data as well. Um, be interesting to see how Andy Murray performs this week. He's had shingles apparently, which apparently uh, developed during the Australian Open, which may have been a reason behind his defeat to Mrs. Zverev. Um, and actually, my father had shingles last year, so I know how, how difficult and painful it is. And certainly, um, I'd be surprised if, if he managed to recover from it fully in the time scale that he's had. Um, other players of fitness doubts, Gail Monfils, who just seems like permanently sort of injury-prone right now. And, and Luca Pui, who, again, like defied my expectations by getting to the final of, of Marseille. But now he's got to travel, obviously, from France to the United Arab Emirates. And certainly he didn't rush to do so, because um, there was pictures on social media last night of him going to the Marseille match uh, last night in, in, in France. So he certainly made, made, made no efforts to get to Dubai that fast anyway so presumably he'll be flying over at some point today but there's no buys in this tournament so um every player will probably be in action today tomorrow and I think there's six matches on the card today starting about now so as we can see summer in dubai most players the top players are, are quite quite return orientated with decent deficit recovery numbers as well burdick less so and so obviously Muller as well, but but it'd be interesting to see how how Cole Schreiber's stats have d uh, developed into sort of more more return orientated as he's he's got older and 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 sort of declined a little bit uh, uh, and has had injuries as well. But in, on a slow on a slow um, medium slow court, I'd expect quite a few breaks to serve and just some, quite a few inserts. It should be quite a good tournament for trading. Um, Acapulco. Next up, Djokovic took a late wild card into the tournament and um, leads the field. Nadal, the, the other player who, who's um, sort of in a very upper echelons of the combined whole break percentage data. And we can see that the, the tournament venue data is very, very similar to Dubai in terms of a um, service hold percentage perspective and aces per game perspective. So again, medium slow conditions, which certainly won't help the likes of John Isner and Jack Sock. Jack Sock, who won Delray Beach without having to play the final against Milos Raonic, who withdrew from the Delray final with, with hamstring injury after beating Del Potro in the semi-finals. Um, Dominic Team is another one to keep an eye on this week. He's gone from like, Rotterdam to Acapulco. So Rotterdam to Rio to Acapulco. Played a ton of matches, played done a ton of travelling. Like I know he's a fit guy in terms of sort of the longevity in matches and, and, and doesn't mind playing a lot of matches, but he's really pushing it right now with his with his scheduling. Um, we can see here also that with the top top ten contenders, all with over eighty percent in uh, whole percentage, that that despite the slow conditions, uh, it might be a bit more serve orientated tournament than, than than Dubai. But then we do have some players with good return numbers as well, and further down, like of Goffin and team as well. So. 
perhaps a little bit less uh, server orientated than, than Dubai, but and, and a very unsociable hours is in Acapulco as well. Taunt matches are played pretty much overnight for Europeans. Um, but yeah, it, it, probably a decent tournament for training, uh, high quality, and as you can see here also, apart from the top two, very level playing field. So should be quite a lot of close matches. I'd expect quite a few in-set swings as well. The final tournament I want to have a look at is in Sao Paulo. Now, a lot of people make the wrong assumption that these South American clay tournaments are all like played in mega slow conditions. Well, that's not the case. Because we've got the data here shows that Sao Paulo conditions are, are, are on the very far side of medium for, for clay, with a 2.6% difference in the tournament mean service hole percentage to the ATP mean, and a 0.07 aces per game difference as well. Um, and obviously we had Keto, Keto a couple of weeks ago as well, which is obviously very fast conditions as well. So it would be a real mistake to treat these South American clay tournaments as one and the same, when they're clearly not. They're, they all need to be treated individually and... Um, it would be a mistake not to do so. So we hear, see here also that there's there's a, not a lot of difference between the top top players in the field. Um, three players here that are shown with the first round by Karina Busta, Cuevas and Ramos, and a bit further down, Zhao Sosa as well. I don't really understand like why Sosa's went gone down to these these South American clay tournaments. His, his stats on clay aren't that great. But then he's picking up first round by, so it's not exactly a difficult life for him right now. Um don't expect him to get that far this week, and and I mentioned that Del Bonis uh, can take advantage of having Sosa in a weak quarter in my bet fair preview this week. Um, so yeah, Del Bonis heads the field from a whole break perspective, which might surprise some people, but his stats on on clay are really quite impressive. But it's a very open tournament. There's a lot of players with decent ability here, and I also wanted to to show how Casper Ruud has has improved from a statistical basis, and he's he's, he's already pushing right up towards these sort of decent clay players on, on the surface from, from a growing sample. And obviously he's got such a such an age advantage on everybody else that he's going to just going to improve and improve and improve. And I can see him becoming a really, really big threat on clay in the future. Um, so, yeah, a mixed bag from like sort of like the return serve orientated players as well. We've got the return orientated players like Karenia Busta, Ramos, Fanini, Schwarzman, Belok. But then we've got quite a few serve orientated players in the field as well, such as Pella, uh, Montero, uh, Root, who's showing that dynamic as well. And to some extent, Jao Sosa, although his stats in play show that he has so many inset swings as well. And a lot of these players do have those that high propensity to, to have inset swings. We've got uh, Ramos, Fanini, Schwarzman, Bullock. They're all they're all they're all guilty of that Bellucci as well. They're, they're, they they'll have those more more inset swings than average. So there's a bit of a, a bit of a contrasting opinions in terms of what I'm thinking with Sao Paulo because conditions are going to be quite fast, which is going to mean that projected holds are higher and inset swings should be lower. But then the player dynamic is is quite swingy to sort of balance that. So I think the key here is in this tournament is just to treat every player and match up on its own merits. And don't make too many sort of assumptions pre-tournament. And obviously the daily spreadsheets that you can get via tennisratings.co.uk show the, that that in, in in individual match data that we can um, look at for each match. Um, that's about it really for this week. Um, like I say, matches just getting underway um, in Dubai. And um, yeah, that's all I've really got to say this week. If you um, if you like the video, uh, comment below, please. Give me some feedback. I had some really great feedback last week. Uh, hit the like button as well if you liked it. Drop me an email, tennistraders.gmail.com. Tweet me at Tennis Ratings. Check out the website, tennisratings.co.uk as well. Um, I'm going to be doing some daily previews this week on there. Um, almost to that 500 subscribers limit as well. So it was a fun, not limit. Um, Target, I should say. Um, so when I hit that 500 subscriber mark, I'll do a giveaway for one person of a daily spreadsheet subscription for a month. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and good luck in the markets this week.